Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yumi Masechet Betza, we are up to Perek Dal Mishnah Vav, today's Mishnah Yot should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Ben Neriyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Minuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Avdir Ben Chaim Nechaim, for the Refua Shnema, Bacha Bat Esther, and Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betoch Shach Ule Yisrael. The Mishnah records another dispute about the use of wood on Yom Tov. The Mishnah begins, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Notel Adam kesa mishelefanav lachtzot bo shenav. A person may take a sliver of wood from slivers that are before him, meaning in his house, to pick his teeth. Wood that is in the house is namukse and may be used for any purpose. Now the Rav explains that in truth, Rabbi Eliezer permits a person to use even the wood that is in his yard. As he says clearly in the next line of the Mishnah, the Mishnah specifies before him, meaning in the house, to stress that the sages who argue with Rebbe Yezer forbid using even wood that is in the house to pick one's teeth. The Mishnah continues, um madlik. Moreover, he may even gather slivers of wood from his yard and light a fire with them or use them for any purpose. Because everything that is in the yard is considered prepared for Yom Tov use and is not muktzeh. Other Tanaim disagree, umrim, but the sages say, umadlik, One may gather slivers of wood only from what is before him, meaning in his house, and he may use them only to light a fire. He may not, however, gather them from the yard, because slivers that are scattered in the yard are not considered prepared at all, at all nor may he use slivers or larger pieces of wood that are in his house for any purpose other than firewood. Now, the Ran explains that when the sages hold that he may not gather them from the yard because slivers that are scattered in the yard are not considered prepared at all, the Ran explains since slivers of wood are small objects, gathering them requires effort and so they cannot be considered prepared unless they're in one's home. Larger pieces of wood, however, which are easy to collect, are not muktzeh even if they're in a yard. That's how the Ran explains the opinion of the sages. Now the sages disagree with the Rebbe Yezer on two points. Rebbe Yezer permits a person to gather slivers of wood from his yard and use them for any purpose, but the sages hold A. Slivers of wood in one's yard are completely muktze and may not be used even to light a fire, and B. Even slivers or large pieces of wood that are in one's house and have been prepared for use as firewood may be used only for that purpose. The sages agree with the Tana of the previous Mishnah who said that wood is assumed to be prepared only for lighting a fire in Yom Tov and is muktze for any other use. And the Rav does tell us that the follows the opinion of the sages. And that is in Rabotai of Mishnah Vav. Mishnah Zayn continues, although one may use fire and yom to, to prepare food, he may not start a fire. And motzin etaur lo mina etzim v'lo mina avanim v'lo mina afar v'lo mina maim. We may not produce fire and yom to from wood by rubbing two pieces of wood together from stones, by rubbing stones together, from earth, by digging into hard earth and making sparks, or from water, by using a glass dish of water as a lens to focus the sun's rays and set something on fire. The rabbis prohibited starting a fire in Yom Tov, even for the sake of preparing food, because one thereby creates something entirely new and an act that is similar to melacha. Now, it is prohibited only to create a new flame, one may light a flame from one that is already burning. And now, although actual melacha is often permitted on Yom Tov for the sake of preparing food, lighting a fire is forbidden because it can be done just as effectively before Yom Tov, as the Mishnah Boa explains in Or Chaim chapter 502, Sifkatan 1. Another fire-related activity that is forbidden on Yom Tov, and and we may not heat up new unused earthenware tiles nor to roast food on them because the first time a tile is heated it is strengthened by the fire and it, its manufacture is thereby completed. Now making a utensil is forbidden on Yom Tov as taught in chapter 4 Mishnah 4. Included in this prohibition is performing the final step in the creation of a utensil as in the case of our Mishnah where one hardens tiles that have already been formed. Now continuing from the previous Mishnah which cited a lenient ruling by Rebbe Yezer that concerns Muktze, the Mishnah cites another such ruling. Ve'odama Rebbe Yezer, and Rebbe Yezer also said, Omed Adam ala Muktze, Erev Shabbat Bashvi'it, a person may stand next to fruits that are Muktze on Friday during the Shemitah year. Now this refers to figs 
or grapes that were put out in the sun to dry. While they are drying, they are not edible and therefore they are muktzah for they have been set apart from use. And the Mishnah speaks of fruits that have dried to a point where some people would eat them, but others would not. The muktzah status of these fruits depends on their owner. If he shows that he intends to eat them on the Shabbat or Yom Tov, they are permitted. Otherwise, they are muktzah. Now when we say um, during the Shemitah year, we know every seventh year is Shemitah when it is forbidden in Eretz Yisrael to plow plant and do other types of works in the fields. Produce that grows during Shemitah is not considered the property of whomever would normally own it. Rather, it is ownerless. Anyone may enter a private field and take produce that is growing there. Ve'omer, the Mishnah continues, Mikan ani ochal machav. He can say, I will eat from here tomorrow by saying that he plants to eat some of the fruits. Even though he did not point any specific ones, he has prepared them and so he is allowed to eat them on Shabbat. Produce that grows in Eretz Yisrael may not be eaten unless certain, until certain portions like Tiruman and Maser have been separated from it. However, the obligation to separate Tiruman and Maser does not begin until the produce has been processed and is ready to be eaten. Therefore, someone who leaves fruits out to dry would not separate these portions from them until the drying process was completed since he does not intend to eat them before then. This means that drying fruits may not be eaten on Shabbat, regardless of Muktzah concerns, since separating Tiruman and Maser is forbidden on Shabbat. In the Shemitah year, though, there is no obligation to separate Tiruman and Maser. Therefore, during Shemitah, if the drying fruits were not Muktzah, they would be permitted to be eaten on Shabbat. So for this reason, the Mishnah specifies Shemitah, since it speaks of fruits that are immediately permitted once their Muktzah status is removed. The same law applies in any other year to drying fruit from which Tiruman and Maser were separated, before Shabbat. The sages, however, hold that this is not enough to remove their forbidden status. The sages say, The fruits are muktzah unless he makes a mark on the specific ones that he plants seed and says, I will eat from here to here. The sages require the owner to specify which fruits he plants to eat and to mark them in order for them to be considered prepared for Shabbat use. And the Rab does tell us, The Halakha follows the opinion of the sages. And that is in Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Bauch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.